Hey, good morning friends, welcome back. Today is Tuesday in the Holy Week and Tuesday is also being referred to as Busy Tuesday because on this Tuesday Jesus is very busy, he's going back to Jerusalem and he is having lots of debates with the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, there's even a group called the Herodians and they're all about asking Jesus questions. They ask him questions trying to trap him. There's argument, there's debate, all with the purpose of trying to find something against Jesus to be able to arrest him and to kill him. But Jesus is doing a great job. He is answering all their questions perfectly. And they're amazed to such an extent that at the end no one dares to ask any more questions. So, busy Tuesday, lots of things happening, lots of reading to catch up with. If you're following our reading plan, by the end of the, today you will be through Matthew 21 to 25, um, Mark chapter 11, 12 and 13, and Luke chapter 20 and 21. So there's quite some reading to do. Uh, stay tuned, keep your Bibles open, spend time in the Word of God these days, especially when you're at home and have nothing much to do, spend time with the Lord, read His Word. Today I want to just read a small part with you from Mark again, Mark chapter 12, verse 21 to 34. Mark chapter 12, 28 to 34. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one, and that there is no other but Him. To love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that He had answered wisely, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. So Jesus is debating Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, teachers of the law, asking him questions. He is able to answer. And yet there is one more question. One of the teachers of the law comes to Jesus and he's being kind and he said, Jesus, uh, I've seen that you've given good answers, you've been nice, but um, I have one final question. Which of the commandments is the most important one? And Jesus then gives a great answer. That he's not making up himself, but Jesus is going back to Scripture. Jesus is going back to the Hebrew Bible. And he quotes... Probably the most famous verse in the Hebrew Bible, the verse that every single Jew in those days and nowadays as well would know. Because this was the verse that they had to recite and have to say out loud every single day. It is referred to as the Shema. If you, if you talk to a Jew and you talk about the Shema, they will all know what you're talking about. Because it is the first word of this important line. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. Listen, Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. And so Jesus refers to these verses. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. This is the most important commandment, Jesus says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with your whole being. Let God be central in your life and love Him. And then he adds, there's a second commandment, which is also important, and he quotes from Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. It says, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord your God. Most important of all things we do is to love God above all things and to love our neighbors, to love the people around us as we love ourselves. The greatest commandment, the greatest thing to do is to have a love for God. Now, this uh, teacher of the law who asked Jesus said, well, rightly said, and we, we are not sure exactly, but there might be some undertone in what he's saying. Because wasn't Jesus himself claiming to have power and authority from God to heal the sick and to raise the dead and even to forgive sins? Wasn't Jesus somehow claiming that he was God? Because he's been forgiving sins, he's been teaching people with authority and this teacher of the law says, right, Jesus, you say, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad, the Lord, our God, is one. So if God is one, then who are you, Jesus? Who are you? Do you understand yourself to be God? Or, or what's up with you? And so the question turns into maybe a nasty question trying to trick Jesus and say, okay, Jesus, who do you say you are? Just say it out loud. Just say it clearly. When you say you are God, we have you because you would be blaspheming. And we have reason to then get rid of you. But Jesus is very sharp in, in quoting these verses and indirectly referring to the Old Testament and applying it to himself. That's what he's doing very often, but he never said it so clearly. So at this moment, it is not the time yet for Jesus to get arrested. It is Tuesday in the Holy Week, and the arrest will come later. But um, what Jesus says and how he reacts to this um, teacher of the law is interesting. He says, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And I've been wondering, what could this mean? How can you be not far from the kingdom of God? I mean, you can be just far away and not interested in God and uh, you don't have any love for God and for His people. You're just far away. You're just not, not in the kingdom of God. And you can be in the kingdom of God, loving God, accepting Jesus as His Son and as your Savior, as your Lord. But how can you be not far from the kingdom of God. You're, you're almost in, but not, not there yet. Well, I think Jesus is saying, you are a teacher of the law. You know the word of God. You know the traditions. You know the ceremonies. You know the prayers. You know the Shema. You know the sacrifices. You know what it takes to love the Lord. But just, I'm asking you one more thing. You need to accept me as the Son of God. You need to accept me as the Chosen One, as the Anointed One, as the Messiah. You need to accept me as your Savior. So, Mr. Teacher of the Law, you are close, but your religion is not going to save you. If you want to get saved, then I am going to save you. And so, it is with us today. Do you consider yourself a person who loves God? Or do you consider yourself a Christian? Because you go to church? And because you read your Bible? Or because you pray every now and then? Or do you feel deep down inside a love for God? That you want to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and including 
accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, realizing that you cannot save yourself. You cannot save yourself by the things you do or the things you try and do. Yes, you should try and live up as a good person, but you will depend on Jesus Christ. Maybe you are not interested so much and you are far away. Well, I would invite you and challenge you to come a few steps closer and to check out this kingdom of God and to check out this Jesus. Maybe you feel like you are in the kingdom of God and you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and you are walking with God. Then I challenge you to reflect this week and today on how your love for God is doing. Is there something in you that you can develop to love the Lord your God more intensely? Or maybe to love your neighbor as you love yourself? In these weird times where we are isolated and quarantined and where there is the coronavirus around us, it is uh, different to love your neighbor and to express your love to your neighbor and to the people around you. But uh, I invite you to think of creative ways to keep reaching out through phone calls, through sending cards, to being kind and love um, you, the neighbors around you and love the people that God is sending to your life. Maybe you are, like this teacher of the law, close to the kingdom of God. Maybe you are about to check it out. Maybe you are about to be on the way and to explore what this kingdom of God means for your life and who Jesus is, then I encourage you to keep on searching, keep on reading, and most of all keep on praying and ask the Lord to fill you with a deep love for Him and with an understanding of His Word and that these words that you read in the Bible may apply to your heart. Let us pray together and let's ask the Lord to be with us. Lord our God, we once again come to you and we thank you, Lord, that you have sent your Son, Jesus, into the world and that he is your chosen one, that he is the Messiah, that he is the Savior, that he is the Yeshua. Lord, we praise you for who you are and we ask, Lord, that you will work in our lives wherever we are, however we feel, Lord, may we be people that belong to your kingdom. Lord, may we be people that love you above all things and that love our neighbors as ourselves. God, we pray that you will increase a hunger and a thirst for you, that you will increase a love for you. Lord, we pray for those people who are not part of your kingdom yet, those people who are careless, or not interested, Lord, will you raise up an interest? We pray for those who are seeking and exploring, Lord, will you guide them through your spirit and lead them to the truth and lead them to yourselves. And Lord, be with all your children around this world. Strengthen them and encourage them and help them, Lord, to spread the love for you with the people around them. God, we pray, be with us today and bless us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching again. Um, remember, yesterday I referred to the story of this fig tree. Um, if you keep on reading and keep on following our reading plan, then you will find out more about this fig tree. Uh, especially have a look at Mark chapter 13. The whole thing, but especially in the end, Jesus refers yet another time to this fig tree. So have a read, um, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below or in the comment section. Feel free to share this video uh, with your friends and family, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.